name is Mary, and today we're going to talk about shadow wrap short rows. Uh, it's kind of a mysterious name, but they're actually quite simple. This method uses invisible lifted increases worked at the turn points rather than wraps or pulled double stitches, which are then simply knit or purled together with the stitches out of which they were worked when it comes time to resolve them. This method was invented by Alice Yu, whose work you can find at the link in the video description. Here I have a swatch worked up in one color, and I'm going to work the short rows in a contrasting color to help them stand out. I'm going to get that joined. So on right side rows, you will work to the turn point in your pattern. On this example, I'm going to work until there are five stitches remaining in the row. Now we've got five stitches left on the left needle. And then what I'm gonna do is take my right needle, place the point into the right leg of the stitch below the first stitch on the left needle. So that's this here place it onto the left needle and then knit into it just as if you were doing an invisible increase. Then you're going to transfer that new stitch back to the left needle. You now have what's sometimes called a twin stitch at your turning point. Note that the lifted stitch is not considered its own stitch because it's actually part of the stitch from which it was lifted since it will be decreased back out when you resolve the short rows. Now you're just going to turn your work and prepare to work back in the opposite direction. So now I'm going to turn and purl back. On wrong side rows, you will work to your turning point. And here again, I'm going to do five stitches from the end. Now I've got five here. And then you're going to slip the next stitch on the left needle purl wise from the left to the right needle while keeping the yarn in front. I'm going to slip that here. Then you'll lift the left leg of the stitch in the row below the slip stitch. So here that's this. You kind of have to go under the purl bump to get to that. And then Purl into it. So it's placing it on the left needle. Then you purl into that just like a regular invisible increase. And then you're going to slip both that lifted stitch and the slip stitch back to the left needle. Still with the yarn in front. So purl wise back. And now there's your twin stitch at the turning point. And you can turn your work and prepare to work back. I usually like to pull my yarn snug after working the first stitch after the turn here because it can get a little gappy otherwise. So I'll work a couple more short rows here to illustrate again. So on right side rows, you'll work to your turning point. Here again, I'm going to do five stitches from the last twin stitch. So here we've got five stitches and then our twin stitch. And then we're going to lift the right leg of the stitch below onto the left needle and knit it, then slip that back and then turn and work back the other way. I'm gonna work to our turning point on the wrong side. Again, five stitches from the last twin stitch. So we've got five stitches and then the twin stitch on the left needle. Then we're going to slip that and purl into the stitch below. Slip it back and then turn. And now you can see some fabric building up already with more length in the center than the outside where we've marked more rows. 
And then when it's time to come back and work across the whole row again and resolve the short row turns, on right side rows, you'll work until you encounter a twin stitch. I'm gonna turn, we've already turned and now we're gonna work until we get to a twin stitch. And then you're simply just gonna knit the two loops of that twin stitch together. So that's the lifted stitch and its original stitch. You're just gonna knit both of these together as a regular knit two together. And then you'll keep going. And when you reach the next one, you work it again as a knit two together. So here's that next one, knit two together. So that's those two twin stitches resolved. I'm gonna turn and work back from the wrong side. So here on wrong side rows, you'll work until you reach a twin stitch. So here's the first one we encounter here. And then just purl those two together. Just like that. And then until you get to the next one, So here's our next one, and we can just purl those two together. And then we keep going until the end. All right, so here you can see the row back together with the short row gaps closed and the original stitch count restored. And this nice little wedge of fabric that's come up here. So I'm gonna work a couple more rows in the main color to show you how the fabric will look afterward. Here's another fast forward point. All right, so here is our little wedge of fabric separated on its own. And with the short rows raising the fabric in the middle more than the outside. Uh, if you'd like to substitute this method for wrap and turn short rows, you don't need to do any adaptation. Simply work to the point where the instructions tell you to wrap and turn, and then work the lifted increase and turn instead. If you're substituting for German short rows, you'll want to work one stitch less than the instructions indicate before working the lifted increase and turn. But there you have it. Shadow wrap short rows. Happy knitting. <laughs>